Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. A few of you asked me to recreate this look um, right here for my shorts. And I thought that was a great idea. So of course I'd be more than happy to it. So if you wanna see how we got this look, just keep watching. I also got these amazing Lush extensions. They were sent to me by Irresistible Me, but I wanted to share with you and also put them in because I feel fabulous. I've been wanting some clip-ins for a long time. So I'm very grateful to this brand. So we are gonna be doing a little installation clip in the beginning. I'm gonna show you how I get like a seamless blend because I have little baby hairs that usually poke out, but I figured out a way of applying these that really works for me. Um, also, we're gonna talk pretty seriously about some depressing, traumatic stuff today. Um, so trigger warning, um, is that even necessary? Uh, we're gonna be talking about like kind of like the dark side to the troubled teen industries, um, allegations of abuse, and also we're gonna be talking about why parents uh, drop their kids off in the first place and why they're wrong about doing that. So no shade, but it is uh, it is not a good choice ever to drop your kid off with strangers. And uh, I do get into detail about that. And it's just my experience. It's so silly because this is like a beauty channel and we get ready and we share secrets, but like some of the stuff is so, so dark. And then I pick up a blush and I'm like, and then let's put our blush on. So just humor me. Uh, this is kind of like my only outlet to talk about it in a way that works for me. I don't, I don't want to talk about it and not have a distraction going on. And I know like a lot of you guys like that as well. So although it's like a bit of like a vanity thing, like a beauty tutorial talking about like horrible things that have happened, um, it just is what this channel has become. So if you want to hear how we got this look and install my new extensions with me and also hear about some of the worst things that have ever happened, just keep watching. Okay, before we get into our story time, get ready with me, we're gonna do my hair. Uh, you can see my hair is disheveled and I'll explain to you why. We're gonna be putting some clip-ins today and these are from Irresistible Me. I have the 24 inch length in the rooted blonde. And this is super cool. So like, say you don't know what will be your shade. Like I truly didn't know what would be my shade because my hair is two colors. And like, I didn't know they made extensions in my exact shade range. So look at this. There's a little sample on the bottom. I already opened it. It usually comes like tied in a little package. But see, it says hair sample, try me. And if you order this hair, you don't wanna open this until you try it. Uh, you have to do the sample first because if you open the hair, then it's yours. But once you try the sample, you can tell if it's a match or not. So here's my little sample. And um, it's hard to show the length, <laughs> but it's super long. And look, it's literally my perfect root color. It's my perfect root color and my perfect end color. It's insane. Now, this is my first kind of couple of weeks actually wearing extensions, actually my first one week. So I'm still figuring out the perfect application method, but I do find that having this bit of hair pinned up, like I've seen girls on TikTok do this and I was like, what the, hmm? But it's necessary because if you have scraggly little hairs mixing in with the length, it's a dead giveaway. So I have my hair, it's so it's so silly. Just please don't judge me. But I have my hair pinned up in the back and I'm gonna cover it with my fake hair. In the canister comes all of this hair. It comes in like one, two, three, four, five, six, like eight pieces or so. It's a lot of hair. And there's one weft that's the biggest. And I like to put this kind of in the middle. Um, you can see it's like the thickest or whatever. My baby hairs on the bottom can't handle that. So I use uh, these ones as my first piece. It has the three clips. And yeah, I'm just gonna pop this over that back funny hair situation. And I hope you can see. You guys, please do not 
think I'm such a freak for my hair looking like this. This is how I'm gonna apply them though. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it right over that mess. And that's my first piece. So it's gonna hide it as we go. So then I'm gonna take down another section and my hair on my head is already curled and I curled these extensions a couple days ago. So they're already curled as well, just to blend it. And I used like a one and a half inch. Now we're gonna go in with our big weft. And here she is. So this is like the biggest piece. And I see hairstylists online back combing their hair um, to get it to stay. And I would do that, but I'm way too lazy for all that. So I'm not gonna, but look at that blend. It's like this color is not a custom shade, but it is my exact shade. Shocking. And you guys, sometimes I use all the pieces Sometimes I use half, sometimes I use like just a couple. I don't, I'm still figuring it out. But I love the look of them and I especially love it without my hair underneath because when my hair peeks out, I'm telling you, it's a dead giveaway. You can't tell because I just, didn't do that today and didn't let you see it, but literally I'd be too embarrassed for it to live on camera. So now I'm just gonna do the rest facing forward. Like you could just go ahead and blend that in, but I'm gonna do a few more pieces. Like around here. And you guys know I have all that breakage in the back of my crown, so I kind of have to be careful. So I'm gonna do mostly the sides because I don't wanna be found out. I'm gonna do a two, two thingy piece. And if you've never applied these, it's real easy. They just hook into your hair and you snap it closed. I'm like definitely a beginner at this, but it's really easy. Um, I was intimidated by using them and then I finally got some and really it was no big deal. I'm gonna do right under this hair as well with my two piece. And I'm gonna do it back a little cause I have this bleached front right here. If neither my hair or the extensions were curled, I would actually curl them together because it blends much better. But today my extensions were already curled and I wanna, I wanna ride these out for a long time and not put too much heat on them. So that's why I didn't recurl them. Okay, I stood up to take a look and I think I'm just gonna put a couple of these in the front because I think that's the only place that I really see a, a disconnect. So let's put one over here. Just behind my blonde streak. Yeah, that makes more sense to me. I have all this hair, I don't, I'm like swimming in hair now, it's crazy. This is like my goal hair. And <laughs> I don't know if it's even achievable. I used to have really long, thick hair. And then when I moved to Vancouver years ago, uh, seven or eight years ago, maybe around eight, I started bleaching my hair white and I wouldn't change that, but it definitely, definitely wrecked my hair. And then I got semi-permanent like tape-in extensions a few years back that wrecked my hair. And then my hair healed from that and then I bleached, fried it off at a salon. I didn't do it myself, but 
My hair's been through a lot. I think this looks really pretty. And let me sit up. You can see my microphone is in a weird location, but it is like down past my boobs. I love this hair. Makes me feel pretty. Can you tell that my mood just changed? Like my mood literally just changed. So I still have this one piece left. I'm not gonna use it uh, because I don't need it, but I appreciate having extra because I know like I've looked at other people's extension reviews like from Amazon and stuff and they're like grab two bundles because one isn't enough, but for this one bundle is enough. And I really like this. So anyway, roll my sleeves up. Okay, now let's get into our look. So, like I said before, we're gonna use these shades here. This is what I used in the video. I'm gonna try to do the identical look as far as I can remember, but I'm pretty sure I know what was up. So, I started with that pink color all over the lid. And I have an eye primer on because these shadows kind of need it. They're cream. Any kind of cream shadow, I feel like you should do a primer. And do you see why I like that color as just like an everyday shade? Like I love it just like for brightening. It's like a pretty petally pink color. Oh my God, it would be so beautiful on deeper skin tones because you get a lot more contrast. And they have all different shades. So I think this brand is so fun. It's hard for me to get in my inner corner without a brush because I have talons all the time now. I used to never have my nails done. And then as soon as I learned how to do my own gel X, it was over and I will never stop. Okay, then we go in with the blue and we're just gonna map out the crease and like a little bit of a wingy situation. And these shadows are very, very soft and very blendable. So it doesn't really matter if it looks like, see, because you're just gonna blend it anyway. And I'm pretty sure I brought this on the lower lash too. And now we're just gonna blend that out. It's a super easy blend. And I wanted it to stay pastel, so I didn't really put like any dark colors into it. And yeah, blending out, always out if you want bigger looking eyes. Now, I always talk about like a school for troubled girls memory or something. And I do have some juice to talk about. Like I really do. So in my comments before on TikTok, this girl commented and she said, uh, she said basically that she had gotten involved with one of the counselor's husbands whose name is, actually I'm not gonna say her name cause I don't want any trouble around here. But um, I've talked about her before and she's somebody that I don't really like. So this girl comments that and I'm like, that's interesting. And I'm like, can you tell me more? And she didn't really wanna uh, tell me more or maybe I lost the comment, I don't know. And then, the other day, one of her, one of the girls who went with her commented and she said that sure enough, it was true. This woman's counselor who was a science teacher at the time at the School for Troubled Girls did get involved with the child. Essentially, she's a child. She was underage. I don't know how old she was, but she could be anywhere from uh, 13 to 17. So she confirmed that he did get involved with her in a intimate way, physically intimate way. You know, there's rules on YouTube for what you can say. Um, and then she said in the comments, she wouldn't, she didn't tell me the name or much detail, but she said that the girl got called out of school and was placed in isolation for three days and was essentially reamed out by the woman who's married to that man. And she said that she blamed, that the girl was blamed for all of it. 
and she was dismissed. And I've talked before about how it's really hard to get dismissed. Like they pretty much don't want to dismiss you for anything because they don't want to lose your parents' money. But I just think it's really interesting that this girl was essentially assaulted. That's what it is at the end of the day because she's a minor, she can't consent. And this is an unfair power dynamic. So she, also by the way, I did use this in the video. This is a ColourPop highlight and I'm gonna put it over my lid and under my brow bone. Um, so anyway, so it's an unfair power dynamic. He lives in the outside world. He has a family, he has freedom and she's just locked in this box. And I think it's just, it's just the craziest thing that I've ever heard. And you guys, I've just told you everything that I know about it. And I'm still shocked because in my time, we didn't, we only had a couple male teachers around and I think it was for this reason. And I've talked before about this woman, she was my counselor for some amount of time. And she was like the most pompous and like rude, condescending person I've ever met in my life. She's also like born and raised in the church. And I just find it so shocking that somebody who has treated me in a way that is so condescending and so rude and so dismissive has a husband like that, that she's willing to defend. I don't know why the abuse of these schools and the, bu the abuse of minors still surprises me. But like, this is something that I'm really, really, really shocked and like shooken up about because what's upsetting is first of all, I don't know how this girl is going to find any healing. And she, she talked about it in my comments. Like it was like not a big deal. So I'm sure like also he made it out to not be a big deal. And I knew who this guy was, but he didn't work my program when I was there. And yeah, it's like, I, I made a short about this too that's gonna go live tomorrow before this video even comes out. But parents send their girls away and their biggest kind of like excuse as to why they sent them is to keep them safe. Like, that's what my parents say when I'm like, why did you do that? They're like, well, we thought it was the safest place for you. You were going out at night. You were sneaking out. Thought you were going to die. Your friend died. My 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 little friend, this sweet girl, Maddie, she did pass away um, shortly after I got sent away. So my parents felt very validated in, in sending me when that happened to her. And um, I didn't hear about it for over a month like it happened like almost right after I left and then they didn't tell me for a while because I didn't have phone call privileges and stuff but my parents felt very justified because they're like well at least Emily's like alive which in my defense I wasn't super I wasn't like a wild girl I had a lot of fear because of how I was raised like I I feared every single day about dying and going to H-E-L-L. -L. Like that was a very real fear of mine. So there was a lot of things that my friends did that I didn't do it because I was too scared. But um, back to my point, parents send their daughters here to keep them safe and to take them out of the world where they can't be around boys and they can't get knocked up and they can't do X, Y, and Z. But then you hear stories about this, where children are being taken advantage of physically by their caretakers in these group homes, in these treatment homes. And there was a lot of this at our sister school that since closed down. There was a lot of actually like activity from staff to student, whether it was like gay or straight, um, like some of the women took advantage of some of the female students and also so did uh, the director's son at the school Lakeland and then they changed directors or something. Um, and now they got shut down because they 
essentially a, a little girl passed away in their care. Her name was Naomi Woods. I haven't talked about her on my channel yet because I really feel for her family and I don't want to use her story to get my point across because it's she was robbed of her life and I think like I don't I'm not using her story for views but I don't ever want people to think that I am so I haven't talked about her and I also haven't talked about Taylor Goodridge and like it's also because too it's like super emotional like uh when I come on camera, I'm like alone with my thoughts and I like, I, f I feel these feelings that sometimes I haven't like processed before because I'm like airing traumatic events that have happened to me. And sometimes I come across like while I'm sharing them, like I come across like kind of like avenues of like myself that haven't healed yet. So it's hard for me to talk about it. And also like, I don't want to be perceived as somebody who's using the horrible tragedies of other people to like bring an audience to me but yeah like these two little girls were sent away too, like to keep them safe and then they both passed away of medical neglect the girl Naomi she was in our sister school at Lakeland that I said got closed down it's a teen challenge program I, I was at a teen challenge program just mine was Columbus Girls Academy and hers was Lakeland or whatever. And um, then Taylor was not at a teen challenge facility, but she was in a very similar like troubled teen camp asking for medical help. And they said no and uh, just ignored it until she started fainting. And I actually don't know all the details. It's because it's hard for me. It's hard for me to read. Like, I don't I don't want to know. Like, I, I do, but like, oh, uh, like just hearing that she's hearing the basics of it is like enough for me like I don't really need to do a deep dive and as like I've experienced loss too so every time I see the deep dives I just feel for the family and that's why I don't also talk about it because when my sister passed and people would talk about it in like a documentary style thing or they would like or like sometimes you guys in the comments like I love you dearly but some of <laughs> some people say well what happened to her can you do a story time on it and I can't because it hurts me and it hurts my family and so that's also why I don't talk about these girls because I don't want to hurt their families and like by like treating them like they're just a story because like to me like people were treating my sister like it was just a story and they were just interested in what happened and that like that nosiness like hurt me because I'm like well don't you know what we're going through uh like it hurts so bad when you lose somebody like that I did not intend on getting this emotional or even talking about this today but it just it hurts so yeah so that's why I haven't really talked about these girls but at the same time I do feel like a certain a sense of also responsibility to like use um, the to tell the people who watch me that this is like a real problem and this is really what's happening and this is what can happen like when you send your girls to a safer to to live in a group home where she's safe like she's not actually safe like and I say too in my real or my short that's gonna go up tomorrow like. The best case is that the girl leaves the treatment facility group home, whatever it is, um, trouble teen camp. The best case is that she leaves with new trauma and the worst case is that she doesn't leave at all. And like so many kids have passed away too and it's only just becoming public knowledge because these schools cover it up. There's like, there's websites that entail every child who's ever passed in these programs. So it's, it's really serious. And I went to one of the better schools or whatever. Like it was like genuine, it was generally considered safer than wilderness because we slept inside. Like we were fed three times a day. We did, they would like not take us to the bathroom and stuff. 
but it wasn't like wilderness. Like some girls, they would go to the bathroom. They would get taken to the bathroom twice a day and be forced to like drink water. So I was so lucky in the camp that I went to. But at the same time, this could happen at the camp that I went to because Naomi who passed went to Lakeland and we had very similar rules as them. Like it's a very, it's a parallel program just in different states with different directors, but they're all very much the same. And also I'm using just that same Ardell Wispy that I've been obsessed with the 705. Um, and also we didn't get taken to the doctor ever. Like one girl, her name was, um, Michaela and she ran away a bunch of times and she was also uh doing uh she was also hurting herself in in many ways but on her on one of her most recent uh runaway situations she came back messed up she was all chewed up like her skin like she was all chewed up and she didn't get brought to the doctor like if you had an infection or something like it wouldn't just stop there. It would just continue to fester. I was brought to the doctor once and that was in like, I was there three years and I went to the doctor one time. So like, I see how this happened because also girls who complain about like their stomach hurts or this and that. And Naomi, uh, the girl at Lakeland had been complaining about stomach pain. Like the staff will just straight up ignore you. That's a fact. Like I've seen it, I've experienced it. Nobody believed us. Nobody could advocate for us. We couldn't call, even like if it was an emergency, we couldn't call an ambulance. We couldn't call the police. Nobody could help you when you're in this situation. And it's really scary. Like they're literally, they're literally kids who are dying. Like, so let's put on this lash and try to be happy. Also, another thing that bothers me about the whole dropping your child off at a troubled teen camp is that the people at these camps get all the credit and get treated like royalty. Like, thank you so much for caring for our daughters. Thank you for showing her God's way. Thank you for changing her. Thank you for saving her soul, blah, 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 blah. These are real conversations that happen between parents and directors. And they are so revered, like the people who run these camps. And it is only because they share the same faith as the parents who are dropping their girls off. There is no proof. There are very, there's a very small uh, percentage of girls who actually come out okay from these programs. And, um, and truthfully, like many girls pass, like you guys, if we had yearbooks, which we didn't obviously have yearbooks at the Troubled Teen Center, but I wish that we did because you would see that so many of the girls that we went to these schools with are not here anymore. So many of them. And I'm serious, like I really feel that it adds trauma to trauma to um, to lock these girls up and throw away the key to lock, especially when the girls are adopted, have them facing more rejection. Like it makes me sick. And like, you wanna get so mad at these parents, but at the same time, they're just, a lot of them are just dumb. We're gonna use some makeup by Mario Foundation. I was gonna, I was planning on like telling you guys how I feel about this, but I'm not even gonna like go into a review because I'm on this, I'm on this spiel. But I will tell you this, I do like this and you'll see the finish and you can tell me if you like it or not. I have the shade 3W and I'm putting everything on a palette today because I don't wanna mess up my sleeves. <sighs> okay, so back to what I was saying. Parents bring their girls to these centers to keep them safe, they bring them to good, good Christian people and they believe what the good Christian people say um, without knowing them, without receiving any proof. It's kind of like how you go to church and you don't know the pastor personally. Dude, he's a complete stranger, but you assume that he has a special relationship with God because of where he is as a pastor. You assume that he hears the voice of God and by the way, you guys, I don't believe this. I'm just saying what people think. 
and you would take what he said to you as truth. That's what these parents do when they bring their daughters to these centers. They think, well, because we share the same faith, you can have my daughter, my most prized possession, and I trust you with her. Um, so it's like, it, it's just something that happens. It shouldn't happen. I'm gonna use my attempt to concealer wheel. Um, but it does, like people really believe in these strangers. And what I keep trying to say on the internet so that somebody hopefully will hear it and not send their kid is that you don't know these people. Your kids are safe when you can see them. Your kids are not safe with strange men and strange women. Like in what world do you let strangers sleep in the same room as your kids? Like in what world do you just drop them off just because somebody said it was a good idea? Um, and I think like as the generations are changing and stuff and as kids are getting older, like I'm hoping that we'll have parents in however many years who don't do that, but there's still parents who are reaching out to people that I know today, I just got a message and I haven't opened it yet. I have to open it from this girl who went to Lakeland and she said something about a, a parent reaching out to her from Columbus Girls Academy, which is where I went, asking if she should send her daughter yet. Like, people still think it's a good idea because also they're gullible. If you think about people who are really, really active in any religion, in any cult, in Scientology, in Christianity, I'm not saying it's all... BS, but a lot of it is. And people believe it like, okay, people who are extra gullible, I think are more likely to join churches and be really active in religions because some people feel more comfortable and don't come for me because I respect your religion. I'm just talking about like some people, like some people who give their kids away and stuff. Like I'm not talking about everybody. I'm just talking about some people. So like, some people, like the people that I know, they were so gullible, they, they would take the church's word for it or they'd take Dr. Phil's word for it or whatever. And then consequently put their kid in a super horrible and dangerous situation thinking that it's the best thing for them. So, oh yeah. Uh, I'm gonna use this uh, Mario Scott Soft Sculpt transforming skin enhancer and light medium. Mm, I've been using this as my bronzer lately and I like it. It's like the perfect mix of warm and cool shades. I'm tired of looking orange. You guys have been seeing me look orange and you're so kind because nobody said so in the comments, but I know in a couple of these videos I was orange. I know that I was um, and you're freaking sweethearts for not saying anything uh, cause it would have, it would have hurt my feelings, but I did, I was orange a couple of videos back because I wasn't, I don't know, I was using that Too Faced bronzer way too dark, way too dark. And by the way, out of both of these Mario products, um, I would keep both obviously because I didn't return it and I spent my money on this. But uh, if I were to have to choose just one, it would probably be this bronzer. Though I do like the foundation, but this is a really good bronzer and it's hard for me to find a great bronzer every now and then. Uh, just because everything that's fair is often just a little too warm. And yeah. I'm gonna powder my face because I powdered in the video. Which we're gonna do, I'm gonna use the Givenchy powder today because uh, I was using the Makeup Revolution and I, for a while I was like, this is better than the Givenchy. But then I tried the Givenchy and it's not better, but it is, it's a close dupe. It's a very close dupe, but it's not actually, maybe it is better in some ways. Like it's very thin. It's very thin. Sometimes on a bad skin day, the Givenchy will cake on me and the Makeup Revolution, it won't cake on me. But the Givenchy has this little bit of luminosity to it, like tiny little micro sparkles, like tiny finely milled. And 
that for me makes it a winner. And then I put it in my kit and I used it on a few models and oh my God, it looked so, so, so good. So I don't know, I feel like the Givenchy is a little better, but I also don't want to like just say that it's better because it's expensive -er and it is way more expensive. It's like five times the cost, but it is, it is good. It's very good. I think the best case, like, I think I could shut up about it. Like, if the school I went to, like, stopped <laughs> traumatizing little girls, like, I could stop talking about it for sure. Like, but until that happens, I don't know if I can stop talking about it. And also, like, sometimes, you guys, sometimes I really want to stop, talk about, stop talking about it. Like, sometimes I'm like... I feel like a broken record talking about the same thing again and again. But then at the same time, like the demand to talk about it is very high. Like you guys ask about it and I appreciate that. Uh, and I just appreciate you like listening to anything I have to say, honestly, uh, because I just talk a lot of shit. But I probably won't stop talking about it until they close. And I don't know if they will close because they look amazing on paper. Truly, like, looks amazing. I know you guys have seen their website because you tell me that you've seen it. Uh, you guys, I forgot to use this blush before I powdered, so I can't, I can't use it. I wanted to, but we're just gonna contour with that. Um, it's the M36 bronzer from Mob. I've been noticing too, like whenever I realized that I was orange, it's also because I was using a lot more bronzer than contour. And then that is what made me realize I need like, I need a contour shade. So this technically is a bronzer, but you can see it's like got almost like a rose tone to it, like a dusty, like rosy brown. I think there's blush on this brush too. It's not like a warm bronzer, it's a cool bronzer. And that is what creates really amazing shadows. Also contour, shades that are a little bit more dusty looking, they are harder to blend out, but the reward from them is very great. And I, like I've said, I'm sick of being orange, so this is very nice. Also something interesting that I found out, there's this organization called Unsilenced. I'll put them in the caption, they're awesome. They like support survivors of uh, trouble teen industries and stuff. Like they help out people who need it, people who are homeless and on the street after leaving one of these programs and stuff. And they told me that it's the same marketing company called Exceed Marketing and Best Choice Networks who are all kind of linked and they all like help make placements for girls, whether it's through like the government or like they're all kind of like in affiliation with each other and they'll like send her to different programs and all sort of kind of like profit from it. And I thought it was really interesting. Um, if you wanna check out the, the work that they do, then I'll put that in my um, comments below. Like they truly do important work. Like they really put me to shame because like I just come on here and I talk about it and I do makeup. Um, <laughs> but like, I don't know what else to do about it. So for me, like my skill is just storytelling and, and talking about it, but they're actually like doing the work. Look at this little blush. See what I mean? Like, <laughs> like they're doing so much work and I'm saying, look at this little blush. Okay, but really, it really is cute and I do still love makeup. Also, like, I am, after not enjoying life, I put the work in to enjoy life. Like, there was a time where I was in college and I was deciding that I was going to be a therapist so that I could help other people. And then I realized that 
I don't have the juice to help other people and that I barely have the juice to help myself. And yeah, that's kind of like where I'm coming from. Like, I think I realized I can't, I just can't do that professionally. To hear more and more and more and more people's traumas, like I realized early on, like luckily, like after my first year, like I can't do that. I can't. So yeah, thanks for getting ready with me today, guys. This was like became a dark one and I don't even know what to say about it. Let's do some freckles though. Uh, everybody always asks me what I do for my freckles. I use Freck. This is from the brand Freck. Freck XL, the original freckle. And the thing about it is that you can put however much or however little as you want. And I like putting a lot because I think it's really cute and I like to do it over blush and then I like to put blush on after. So you just like disperse them with your finger and it blends them out and it also acts as a stamp to like move them around so that you don't have to place every single freckle. And it dries a little fast, so you kind of have to be quick. Like you really should work in smaller sections than I am, but like I'm impatient, horribly impatient. And you could also take a little bit more care than I just did. Yeah, you could really take a little bit more care, but who cares what I look like anyway. This is how I got that look, like to a T. I'm looking at it, it's exactly the same. So that's that was my focus today and also to traumatize you guys and tell you about how parents shouldn't send their kids out. Literally, like, it's so strangely common, but also people are shocked that parents do send their kids away. Like, in my comments, there's people who, there's so many people who have been sent away and there's also so many people who are like, what the F are you talking about? So I think it's like a split mix. Anybody from another country like can't believe it. So I guess this is just like an American thing. And do you know too, you guys, that the government prom um, that the government profits from these uh, centers because sometimes girls will be court ordered to go somewhere and somehow the government will like get a kickback if they place them in um, in one of these facilities. Now I should really have studied it before I started talking about it but you can if you look into it the government is somehow involved like this isn't just like a thing that's like so unregulated and the government has no idea like they know what's going on and they can see the deaths and stuff too because obviously it's like a nationwide and because obviously it's like makes national news when these girls do pass away, especially lately because they were hiding a lot of child deaths like years ago. But now we're kind of in this era of like exposing people and things, which is incredible. It's amazing. It's the best ever. Some people also get exposed for doing like silly things like the Michaela thing, like she's canceled over mascara. Like I do think that she shouldn't lie, but like... Kim, there's people that are dying. That's a better way to use that phrase today. Like, there's people who are dying. Uh, by the way, since I just brought up the Michaela mascara thing, she is definitely lying. Those are, she's wearing not free Ardell individual lashes in the length medium. How do I know it? Because I've been putting those eyelashes on people professionally as my job for the last eight years. I know an individual not free lash when I see one. So yeah, she is lying, but who really cares? Like that's her problem, you know, like that's, it's just gonna affect her at the end of the day. Like who cares? Hmm. I put a lot of freckles. I think that's enough. 
Uh, you can put them wherever you want. You can bring them down or up or wherever. I like to put them on and then I like to go on top with more blush because I find that it just helps them like look a little bit more flush to the skin. And then I always like to highlight on top too because it just adds another dimension and further disguises them. Um, you gotta kind of disguise your freckles because they're fake and people will know no matter what you do, they're pretty, it's pretty obvious that they're drawn on, you know, but it's still super cute. And I'm gonna use this highlight. It's like a little peachy thing. It's what I use in the video, the heart of gold. Uh, by the way, all this ColourPop stuff was gifted. And I think you're supposed to say that, but I don't have like, like nobody's paying for any of this stuff in the video, but they definitely did send it to me. And um, I appreciate it and I like it. If you ever see me using something, it means I like it. Like there are things that have gotten sent to me and they're just in this drawer. Like I'll show you something I don't like. I don't like this face tanner. So it stays in the drawer. I thought I liked it the first time around, but it's just, just weird. That's my drawer of things that I give away. And to be honest, I should really send a package to my family out of state because I have a bunch of stuff. I also want to do a giveaway, you guys, with you. Uh, and I think I'm going to do it at 200K. But I haven't figured out, like, the rules or what I want to do with that. But I want to do a giveaway to show appreciation because I do appreciate you guys being here so much. I never thought that anybody would listen to me talk trash about the people who essentially stole my childhood. This look is so bright and ethereal and the subjects are so dark. That just goes to show you never know what's real and what's not on social media. Um, here's this uh, lip liner. In the video, I think I used ColourPop Brown, but I, I wanna use this today. This is a totally taupe, total taupe. And the lip in the video, I used so many different products and then I put the brown over it. And to tell you the truth, I don't know what I was wearing besides the brown, which is also why I don't have much loyalty to it because I, I put on like a ColourPop lip, didn't really like it. Put on, um, whoa, that's way too dark. Put on something else, didn't really like it, so you know. But what I'm gonna do today to try to get it back to that color is put on the Naked Sundays uh, Glossy Gloss, and then I'm gonna put like a nude, because I always have to put like a nude. It's a compulsion. I'll put, a, I'll put a little bit of the ColourPop that I tried, but... Oh. It's way better on top of that liner. I did this on its own and it was weird. Okay, I just went ahead and pulled out like all my favorite nudes, so we'll just see which one sticks. This is my one of my ultimate favorites, it's Sephora. It's shade 23 Inspire in the Lacquer Rouge, Rouge Lacquer something. You'll know it when you see it, it's in this packaging. And this shade, for some reason, it's only online, it's nowhere else. Also, my lips also looked different in that video because I had just gotten my lips done that week. Remember I told you I was gonna do that and then I didn't film until they were healed. That's why I did a nail video last week because my face was jacked. So my lips look a little different and that's because they are. And it's also because I have no idea what I used. Now, I think as a last step, I just want to put on so much mascara, like cake it on.
I love this mascara, but it did get dry fast. But at the same time, I've had it since, since October, November, December, January, February. Oh, it's been four months. Okay. It's not bad then. But some people like, I, I would hate to recommend it and think you have you think that it doesn't work well for long. And to be honest, it doesn't work well for long. It works great. It's life changing for two months and then it's all downhill from there. But at the same time, no mascara has ever worked as well as this one. So I do still recommend it like on me because I don't have the type of lashes that will like, do you hear him? I have a neighbor. I'm undecided on this lip, but I don't think that I could even make it better. Might be wrong, but I think this lip is missing like a little bit of like red or pink. And I might regret this, but. Hmm. Hmm. This is the most random gloss ever. It's Emela, the one lip gloss. Mm, yeah, okay, that was better. Okay, yeah, so this is the final look. Thank you so much for getting ready with me today. I'm sorry for the trauma dump, but I feel like it's important to talk about these things in a respectful way, especially when it pertains to other people's stories. Like my story, I have no trouble just airing it out. But when I talk about other people's stories, there's just like a heaviness that comes with it because it's not my suffering. And I don't think we should use other people's suffering as entertainment. So yeah, so when I talk about other people, I try to tread lightly and I will continue to do so because I just want everybody to feel like they're, uh, if they're being talked about that they're held in high regard and, and that they're supported and everything. So thanks for being here with me. Thank you for all your support to me. I really appreciate you and I'll see you for the next one.